My name is Patrick McPhee and I'm a doctoral candidate in the School of Rehabilitation Science at McMaster University and member of CanChild Center for Childhood Disability Research. I'm the lead author on a study that examined the effects of physical activity, age, and body composition on fatigue in adults with cerebral palsy using a recently developed fatigue questionnaire, the Fatigue Impact and Severity Self-Assessment, referred to as the FISA. This study was completed with the assistance of my advisor, Dr. Jan Willem Horter. My name is Jan Willem Horter. I'm director of the Kenchild Center for Childhood Disability Research at McMaster University, and I'm a professor in the Department of Pediatrics at McMaster. Clinically, I work as a pediatric physiatrist at McMaster Children's Hospital. My research focuses on family, function, and fitness in persons with childhood onset disabilities. Our paper will be published in April 2017 issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. What's already known about fatigue in adults with cerebral palsy is that musculoskeletal problems common in this population, such as spasticity and contractures, cause fatigue, which in turn limit locomotion. We also know that physical fatigue, such as muscle soreness or weakness, is greater in adults with cerebral palsy when compared to the general population. However, significant knowledge gaps exist on fatigue and its related factors in adults with cerebral palsy. Specifically, no one has examined fatigue in adults with cerebral palsy with the measure validated in this population, nor has anyone described fatigue across all uh, levels of the Gross Motor Function Classification System, or the GMFCS. With that being said, the purpose of our study was to describe fatigue in adults with cerebral palsy across the GMFCS in its entirety using the recently developed FISA questionnaire and to determine which variables can predict fatigue in this population. What's new in our article and from our findings was that both body mass index and waist circumference were positively related to fatigue in adults with cerebral palsy suggesting that adults with CP who had greater BMIs and waist circumference measures had increased levels of fatigue. We also found that moderate to vigorous physical activity levels were negatively related to fatigue, which may act as a training mechanism to reduce fatigue in this population. These findings have important clinical implications. Healthcare providers should promote healthy eating and prevent or manage overweight in adults with cerebral palsy to reduce fatigue. We also saw a positive relationship between age and fatigue, suggesting that healthcare providers should discuss fatigue with individuals with cerebral palsy throughout the lifespan. The next step in this area of research is to examine fatigue along with physical activity, diet, and sleep in adolescents and adults with cerebral palsy longitudinally. With this knowledge, we hope to develop a clinical care pathway for fatigue. We would like to thank you for listening and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions.